Welcome to Expose Today. I'm your regular host, Tony Akiyemi. Today we'll be talking about something very important. Of course, everything we've been talking about has been very important. But I said so because of the place that it occupies in the minds of the population. And that is the subject of cholesterol. Now, cholesterol is such a big deal. Many are uninformed about it. Many more are misinformed about it. Today, we want to be informed about cholesterol. We want to look at two major aspects. We want to look at the beneficial effects of cholesterol as well as the detrimental effects of cholesterol. When we talk about beneficial effects, we are talking about the good things that cholesterol does to our body and our health. And then the detrimental effects refer to the bad things that it does to our body. Most of us, if not all of us, have heard about the detrimental effects of cholesterol, the dangers of cholesterol, the problems of cholesterol, but many of us have never been told that cholesterol is also good for many things in the body. Today, I'll be sharing with you eight beneficial effects of cholesterol, eight benefits derivable from cholesterol. Then, maybe in subsequent episodes, we'll be looking at the detrimental effects of cholesterol. And then, of course, we are going to be discussing the subject of how to lower cholesterol. What is the conventional medical approaches to lowering cholesterol? And what are the natural approaches to lower cholesterol? We will also look at the side effects of the drugs used to lower cholesterol and the alternatives that we have in nature from our food, our spices, from simple vitamins to lower our cholesterol without any known detrimental effect. Okay, that is the subject of cholesterol. I'm honored to be your host on a weekly basis on this subject. I want to encourage you to invite your friends, your family members, your relatives, everyone that you know to come Join me every Monday, 8 p.m. Nigerian time on Expose, streaming live simultaneously on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. I'll be exposing and revealing to you things around you to support your health. I'll be having international experts join me. In fact, in this month of August, I'll be hosting an international expert that I will be interviewing who will be shedding light on some aspects and indeed expose to us things that we probably didn't know before now. I believe that to be informed is to be transformed. To be uninformed is to be deformed. Like I always say, the best prescription is knowledge. Okay? What we need is not more medication, but more education. Don't go away. I'll be back shortly on Expose. Welcome back. This is Expose, and I'm your regular host, Tony Akiyemi. Today, we are discussing cholesterol. Actually, about 10 years ago or so, I did a healthy living newsletter on how to lower cholesterol without medication. I'd like to read the introduction to you today from that newsletter. It says, cholesterol is a hard, waxy lipid, a lipid substance that melts at 149 degrees Celsius, and that is the equivalent of 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Cholesterol is essential for our health, and we do not need to obtain it from our food, since our body can manufacture it from simpler substances. Now, the nutrients that we get into our body are typically classified into two categories. We have essential nutrients, and non-essential nutrients. What does that mean? Essential nutrients are the nutrients that your body cannot manufacture. You have to get it from your food. In other words, if you don't get it from your food, you will be deficient in that nutrient. It becomes essential because your body cannot make it. So you must ingest it. You must eat it. You must drink it. That's essential nutrients. 
There are some other nutrients that if you don't eat them from your diet, your body will manufacture it by itself. Those are called non-essential nutrients. The reason they are called non-essential is not because they are not essential. They are called non-essential because whether or not you eat them, your body will make them. In other words, your body knows how to make up for whatever deficiency you have. That's why they are called non-essentials. But they are actually very essential to health. They are in fact probably more essential than the so-called essential nutrients. And that's the reason the body makes them. Because if you don't make them, you may die. If you don't have them in your diet, you may die. So your body cannot wait on you and trust you to bring it. So your body says, whether you bring it or not, I better make this thing for myself before this guy kills me. That's why they are called non-essential because the body can make them. All right? So cholesterol happens to be one of those. It is a non-essential nutrient that your body can manufacture so you don't have to eat it from your food. Now, even when you are eating it from your food, your body still continues to manufacture it. So the two major sources where you get cholesterol from into your body are these. Number one, the one that your body manufactures in the liver. The liver is the factory where cholesterol is primarily manufactured. Some amount of cholesterol is also manufactured in the brain. That is used for making neurotransmitters to help you to transmit information or data through your nervous system or to help your memory, to help you remember things. We are going to be seeing some of the dangers of low cholesterol as we go on. If your cholesterol is too low, you will start suffering from memory loss because you need it for memory. So it is manufactured partly in the brain but mainly in the liver and there is a particular enzyme in the liver that facilitates the synthesis of cholesterol in the liver. So you get cholesterol manufactured by your body and you get cholesterol from your food. When you eat fatty food, particularly those long chain fatty acids, okay, uh, long chain saturated fatty acids, they are cholesterol. All the thick, thick, yellowish fat that you get from your meat cut, from your turkey, from your chicken, and all of those uh, from egg, from milk, a lot of cholesterol comes from there. The fat that you get from fish and from seeds, like flaxseed oil, those ones don't have cholesterol in them. They are not saturated fat. Those are unsaturated fat, mono-unsaturated fat, and they are rich in omega-3. Those ones actually help to lower cholesterol, not increase cholesterol. So there are two different kinds of fats that we eat. We eat saturated fat and we eat unsaturated fat. One of these days, I will, I will break it down, the type of fats and the impact that each category can have on our health. But today, just understand that the two sources where you get cholesterol from, one from your body, the other from your food. In fact, sometimes, when you drink a lot of sugary drinks, a lot of sugar, soft drinks, soda pop, or even fruit juices, and you consume it a lot, your body will utilize the glucose for energy. The excess will be converted to glycogen, but your body can only store a maximum of uh, about 300 uh, grams of gly glycogen in your body. And if you have more uh, glucose, af after some of them have been utilized for energy, some of them have been converted to glycogen, the remaining one that is excess, your body will convert to fat and store it away. And then that fat contains cholesterol. So sugar, excess sugar can also elevate your cholesterol level. Okay? So cholesterol comes from your food and your body manufactures cholesterol. That's what you need to know about cholesterol. Okay, let me read the introduction to you again. Cholesterol plays vital and detrimental roles in our health. There is no nutritional element as controversial as cholesterol and no substance about which there is much confusion. Cholesterol has been so publicized in the media and nutritional circles that it strikes terror in the minds of misinformed people. The cholesterol scare is big business, okay, as usual. It also serves as a powerful marketing tool for food manufacturers and vendors. You see oil, they will say cholesterol free. I've, I've never seen any uh, monounsaturated fat that is high in cholesterol in the first place. So when they say low cholesterol oil, free cholesterol oil, 
I wonder what that means. Because these monosaturated, monounsaturated fats don't have cholesterol in the first place. Okay? And then, especially those who make margarine uh, and vegetable oils. Because saturated fats have been, you know, given a bad name and a bad rap. Everybody wants to run away from saturated fat. I'm going to be correcting that impression in the future. Now everybody wants to take, oh, cholesterol free. I don't want butter. I want margarine. We'll be discussing that in the future. Margarine is far worse for your health than butter. Far worse for your health than butter. Don't be deceived that margarine is a healthy option over and above butter. We will discuss that in the future. Today all I want to emphasize are the vital uh, importance, the important benefits, the major benefits derivable from cholesterol. And I'll be sharing eight benefits of cholesterol with you today. Uh, by the way, you must have heard also that there is bad cholesterol and good cholesterol. Uh, we have HDL cholesterol or high density lipoprotein. That's what they call good cholesterol. Then we have low density lipoprotein which is the LDL cholesterol. They call that bad cholesterol. Now, the reason they label them good and bad, uh, I will explain in the future, but both of them serve different purposes in the body. You cannot do without both of them, both the good and the bad. The bad actually escorts certain bad things out of your body. So they are very, very critical as well in your body. You cannot have low or no bad cholesterol in your body. If you have zero LDL cholesterol in your body, there will be a major health crisis in your system. So cholesterol plays a very important role, whether good cholesterol or bad cholesterol. Of course, they must be in a certain ratio in order to be very beneficial. So let me run quickly through the eight vital benefits of cholesterol. Number one, our body under our skin utilizes cholesterol to synthesize vitamin D when we stay under the sun. So if you don't have adequate amounts of cholesterol, you cannot produce vitamin D under the sun. So you need cholesterol to produce vitamin D. That is the first benefit. And vitamin D, I have already discussed the importance of that. It boosts immunity. It strengthens your bones and your teeth. And performs several other functions in the body. Number two, our bodies make steroid hormones from cholesterol. Steroid hormones. Now we're talking about uh, the sex hormones in particular. And the three best known steroid sex hormones in the body are progesterone, estrogen, and testosterone. Without those hormones, you cannot make babies. <laughs> you, can't, you can't get pregnant. You can't have children. You can't sustain pregnancy through nine months. For, for example, if you are low on progesterone. Progesterone is needed to relax the muscles of the womb so you don't miscarry your baby. Okay? And testosterone is needed by men to be men. So these steroid hormones are very critical to fertility and procreation and successful pregnancy and childbirth. And you see that cholesterol is used to manufacture those uh, steroid hormones. Number three, our body makes adrenal corticosteroids. In other words, uh, steroids by the adrenal glands to fight uh, the kind of hormones that we use to fight stress, to flee or to fight during stressful situations. Those hormones, adrenaline, cortisol, and what have you, are also synthesized from cholesterol. Cholesterol is the raw material to make those hormones. Okay? Now, these hormones are called, they include aldosterone, which regulates water balance through our kidneys. Otherwise, the body will be retaining too much water or draining out too much water. They, are, they increase sodium retention by our renal tubules, that's the tubules in the kidneys, and uh, cortisone, which promotes the synthesis of glucose to prepare our bodies to fight or to flee during times of stress. Then number four, cholesterol is used to produce bile acids. Bile acids. And this helps us in the emulsification and digestion of fat. You know, in your gallbladder, you have a bile inside your gallbladder. And whenever you eat something fatty, 
your liver will squeeze the gallbladder and some bile acids will be discharged from the bile duct through the bile duct into your digestive tract to mix with the fat that you ate, the oil that you ate. And it is that bile acid that will emulsify the fat and make it ready for digestion. The fat cannot be digested until it has first of all been emulsified. And it is bile that emulsifies fat. And that comes from your gallbladder. And the bile acid is primarily made by, I mean made by your body with cholesterol. So you can see how important cholesterol is to, to the digestion of fat. Next, number five, to compensate for changes in membrane fluidity. Cholesterol is used to compensate for changes in membrane, membrane fluidity. I will explain what that means. Our cells, the cell structure, if you remember, animal cell structure, there's a cell membrane, which is the cell wall. And then there is the nucleus, there is the site in the cell. Now, the cell membrane serves as the fence, the boundary. It can open to allow something to go into the cell. It can also open to allow something to exit from the cell. So nutrients go into your cells through the cell membrane. Waste products exit the cell through the cell membrane. Alright? So, the cell membrane is the gateway. Now, when the cell membrane is too loose and anything can go in, then the body will add more cholesterol to the cell membrane to make it more rigid. Okay? But when it is too rigid, too hard, too closed, that something cannot penetrate easily, the body will remove some cholesterol from the cell membrane to fluidize it. So it regulates the fluidity to either open up or close up, to allow things to go in or go out, or to block, not to allow things to go inside or to escape. That is what we call membrane fluidity. It is cholesterol that the body uses to do that regulation. Imagine if everything is rigid and you cannot regulate it. Then there will be a problem. So you see how powerful cholesterol can be. Number seven. Or is it number six? We are right now. Okay, whatever. Cholesterol helps to heal our skin tissue and to prevent infection. Because our skin glands secrete cholesterol to cover and protect our skin from dehydration, from cracking, and the wear and tear of the sun, of the wind, and of the water. Cholesterol helps the body to produce wax, more or less, so to speak, to wax the skin, to make it able to retain water, make it fresh, so it does, your skin does not begin to crack. It is cholesterol that helps with that. You see some people, they will tell you that their faces are oily, or waxy, or something like that. Now, the next one is that cholesterol can also serve as an antioxidant. Your body produces some super antioxidants. We have S-adenosylmethionine, otherwise referred to as SAMe. We also have glutathione. These are two powerful super antioxidants that the body synthesizes to fight free radicals. You also get antioxidants from your fruits. When you eat a lot of fruits, a lot of vegetables, you get a lot of antioxidants. Then from your vitamins, like vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, and from some minerals like selenium, all of these are antioxidants. But if your body needs more antioxidants to fight free radicals and your body does not have enough, cholesterol is the backup antioxidant. Your body will take cholesterol and use it as an antioxidant to fight free radicals. You see how powerful and important, how vital cholesterol can be. And finally for today, Cholesterol is needed to form messages in the brain. Memory loss will be the result if there is low cholesterol in the brain. To get this newsletter, I wrote it over 10 years ago. It's available at familabooks.com. F-A-M-I-L-A books.com. You can download the digital version to your device and you can read much more about how to lower cholesterol without medication. This is how far we can go today. I'll be coming back next time for the rest of this month to discuss the other side of cholesterol. If we cannot use medication or we should not use medication to lower cholesterol, then how do we lower cholesterol? That is what I'll be bringing next time. I'll discuss the risks of statins, that is the drugs that they use to lower cholesterol. And then I'll give you alternative in your kitchen i'll be exposing that to you 
There are things in your kitchen that can lower cholesterol. Maybe you are not aware. And I'll show you what those things are. And then, before the end of the month, you'll be meeting some of my international guests, international experts that I will be interviewing on this show, which is uh, Exposé on a weekly basis. All right? Now, today, I want to answer, before I go, a particular question that somebody has posted to me based on the presentations that I made uh, in the month of July 2020. I talked about fruits, vegetables, herbs, nuts, and seeds. Okay, incidentally, the oils in nuts and seeds actually don't elevate cholesterol. Instead, they help to lower cholesterol. Like people have touted palm oil, red palm oil, and coconut oil as capable of elevating cholesterol. Nothing could be further from the truth. Then I mentioned during that time that fruits are essentially and primarily cleansers and vegetables are primarily nourishers. Then somebody asked me the question, why do you say that vegetables are nourishers and fruits are cleansers? That, that person thought that vegetables are better cleansers than fruits and wanted to know why I made that assertion. And so this was my answer and I want to say it so that everybody can get the picture. Now when we mention vegetables, the first thing that comes to mind are leafy vegetables. You know, like uh, lettuce, like, like um, maybe a bitter leaf, water leaf, pumpkin leaf, and so on and so forth. Those are all leafy vegetables. They are only a small fraction of vegetables. I, I did categorize and classify vegetables to us the other day. Yams are vegetables. Potatoes, vegetables. Cassava, vegetables. Okay? Uh, beetroot, carrots, those are vegetables as well. Now, most of the carbohydrate food that we eat in my part of the world, in West Africa, they are based on tubers and roots. Okay? We have cocoa yam. We have yam. We have cassava. We have sweet potato. We have Irish potato. All these are vegetables. And those are the basic sources of complex carbohydrates that we use to nourish our bodies. Okay? Of course, we also bring in the other types of vegetables, stock vegetables, alien vegetables, and so on and so forth. So, they are primarily nourishers of our bodies. But of course, I did mention at that time that it doesn't mean that they don't cleanse as well. The leafy vegetables in particular can aid our cleansing, particularly when we juice them and drink them as vegetable juices. I love barley grass juice. I love wheat grass juice. Those are powerful cleansers as well. But what I said is that vegetables are primarily, mark my words, primarily nourishers and secondarily cleansers. Nourishing is their major function while cleansing is their minor function. It's, somebody who, it's like somebody who earned a degree and majored in something and minored in another thing. Okay? Now, when it comes to fruits, fruits cannot be used to sustain life long term. You can't be feasting on fruit alone without vegetables to sustain your life. No. Fruits have their place. They come with a lot of fluid, a lot of liquid, they come with a lot of minerals, and they come with a lot of uh, phytochemicals that can help the body to cleanse and detoxify. That's why I say that fruits are primarily cleansers. But of course, they can also nourish the body because they bring vitamins, they bring minerals, so they can nourish as well. But then, you cannot use them as your primary source of nourishment, but they can be used to support all other things that we use to nourish our bodies. Then, of course, we also have the place of grains. Grains also help to nourish the body. Now, the basic sources of macronutrients are actually from the root vegetables, tuber vegetables, and the grains. And then, the support ones are primary, I mean, basically the micronutrients usually come from the category of fruits. That's where we get a lot of vitamins, a lot of minerals. The vegetables also provide some vitamins, of course. All right, but basically, uh, complex carbohydrates come from the vegetable family and simple carbo carbohydrates 
from the fruit family. You can't sustain yourself long term on simple carbohydrates. They have to be complex carbohydrates. Alright, so that is my answer to that particular question. If you have further questions to ask me, it will always be my joy to answer them. Keep them coming. We want to thank you once again for staying with us. Uh, again, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the notification button so that you will always be alerted whenever we come live. We also stream simultaneously on Instagram so you can follow us on Instagram as well as on Facebook. Go to Facebook and like us on Facebook and you will always be alerted. You can always watch, you can also watch past episodes of Expose on YouTube. It's always there in the archive. Once you subscribe to our channel, you can go there and look at our playlist and you can see all the past episodes and that is a very wonderful library for you. Tell your friends, send them there to go watch and you'll be blessing their lives. I'll see you next week, same time. God bless you mightily. This has been Expose, and I'm your regular host, Tony Akiyemi. Don't forget, the best prescription is knowledge. And what we need is not more medication, but more education. God bless you. <music>